Hey everyone, Dr. Collins here. This video is actually a follow-up video to a different version that I posted already on my YouTube channel, which discusses how to run a within subjects ANOVA using SPSS. I wanted to post this update because in the most recent version, at least the most recent version of SPSS that I currently have, they actually changed some of the instructions related to doing this analysis. So in SPSS 27, um, the steps involved in running this type of analysis change just slightly. So I wanted to just provide this additional instruction if you are working with that version of SPSS. So first, uh, I would check out my other videos related to this topic. I'll link to those on my YouTube channel um, if you want more information about how to interpret the results from this analysis. This video is just primarily going to show you how to run this analysis in SPSS 27. So check out those other videos if you want to find out more about how to interpret the results. But here in SPSS uh, 27, the way that we're going to run a within subjects ANOVA is um, first I wanted to, to set you up here with what our file looks like. So we have, um, if you remember in SPSS, every row is an individual person. So we use a within subjects ANOVA when we have each person that's measured at multiple time points or in multiple conditions. So here we have um, a GRE uh, test that's given at three different time points. And so each person, each row in that data view has those three different time points. So each person was measured at a baseline, each person was measured at the midpoint, and each person was measured at the end. And to run this analysis in SPSS, we're going to start here at the Analyze drop-down menu. Next option we want to select is going to be this General Linear Model. We want to make sure to choose the right one because the one right below it looks very similar. So make sure the one with the S, without the S is the one we want. From there, we're going to select the option that says Repeated Measures. And we'll go ahead and click on that. And when we do that, that should open a, um, a new window. Um, and in this new window, we first need to tell the program what our independent variable or our quasi-independent variable was. Remember in ANOVA, whether it's an, an independent, a true independent variable that the researcher is manipulating or it's a quasi-independent variable, um, either way, it's handled the same and it's called a factor in ANOVA. And in this case, uh, the thing that we are, um, well, it's a quasi-independent variable, but the, the different levels that we're looking at is these three different time points. So I'm just gonna call that time. It doesn't really matter what you call your factor. Um, it's best to choose something that reflects what it was that you're comparing. So we're comparing people across three different time points. So time had three levels. It had baseline, it had midpoint, and it had end. So we'll call that factor something. We want to indicate how many levels it has. In this example, we have three. After that, we click add here, and it will add this um, in the list right there. And after that, we'll click on this button that says define. And that will give us another pop-up menu. And here, what we want to do is we just want to move over our three different levels or three different time points into the list here. So if you do have um, an actual order to your different levels, it's important to maintain that order. So here we do have an order that matters in that baseline was the first measurement, midpoint was the second measurement, and then end was the last measurement. Since we do have an order, we'll keep that in that same order. If you don't have a set order, you just want to make sure each of your different levels is um, within this box here. So you'll just move all of your levels over into each of the different boxes. And then from there, what we want to do is we are going to select the option that says EM means. So EM means, we want to click on that. And when we do that, it will bring up this pop-up box. Usually what I do is I just select everything in this factor and factor interactions box and I move it over into the display means for. And then I also click this box that says compare main effects. 
And from there, we are going to click continue. Really all that that does is it provides you with the post hoc test results. If you do have a significant effect, it will tell you um, which of your levels are significantly different from each other. So that's what that does in that option. We're going to click continue here. The other option that I want you to select is in this options button. If you click on that options button, you'll get another pop-up menu. And here you can really select any of these different options that you want to display. The number, uh, the two that I usually do is these first two, which is descriptive statistics and estimates of effect size. So those are usually the ones that I select. Click continue from there. And from there, we're going to click OK. And your output will show up in that new um, window. So there's our output. And like I said, this video is mainly just aimed at showing you how to do this analysis if you're working with that SPSS version 27. Um, if you want to know more about how to interpret these results, please check out my other video that I've linked here. That's all for now. Bye.